Hi everyone, so in this video we'll be looking at temperature, specific heat capacity, heat capacity, latent heat, and all of that, right? So we will start off with some simple definitions. So we are asked to define specific heat capacity versus heat capacity. And the main difference between these is that in specific heat capacity, there's we don't take into consideration the mass of the substance. But in heat capacity, it depends on how much of the substance you have. So the mass, right? So the definitions are laid out here for you. And there's a formula that re relates the heat capacity to the specific heat capacity. So because heat capacity deals with mass, to calculate your specific heat capacity from your heat capacity, you just multiply the specific heat capacity, which is small c, by the mass and that will be equal to heat capacity right it's it's actually in the definition if you think about it all right so the specific latent heat of vaporization of water simply means is the amount of energy needed to change one kilogram of water in its liquid state to its geisha state or steam right and vice versa if you want to change back steam into water that's how much energy you will need. We call it the latent heat of vaporization. And for ice to water and water to ice, it's called the latent heat of fusion. So here we have a calculation based on the latent heat. So the formula used for latent heat is E equals M L, where L is the latent heat of vaporization or fusion, whichever one you have to use. So in this case, we want to convert water to steam. So we'll be using vaporization and they will give you your latent heat of vaporization here there's no need to memorize it All right so to calculate the heat we take the mass which is 8 we multiply it by the latent heat which is 2 million 300 thousand all right so we put it in our calculator One second, eight, nine, and we'll get eighteen million four hundred thousand joules. All right, so you could leave it as that if you want, or you could change it to the standard form. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. So it'd be one point eight four ten thirty seven joules. Anyone is fine. Okay. All right, so um, they just threw in a random um, gas law here, but we did a whole video on gas laws, and I'll I'll link it on the top right so you can check it out. Okay, so again, more definitions: heat capacity, vaporization. So all these come very frequently, right? So it's always important to learn your definitions. So this is an important graph: the latent heat graph. So what happens when you are changing states? Is that even though an object might be gaining heat or losing heat depending on which state it's going into it would not lose temperature or gain temperature so for example we have a substance here that has a freezing point of 80 degrees celsius right it's just a random substance and right now it's at 90 degrees so it's in its liquid state at 90 degrees and if it were to go to its solid state that would be at 80 degrees so if we let it cool in a graph the temperature will gradually go down to 80 but we realize when it hits 80 the temperature is going to remain the same although it is losing energy that energy that is losing is actually being used to change the state and not the temperature just yet only after it has gone to a solid will it continue to lose more heat okay but this is the graph that you have to draw and similarly for if it's gaining um let's say we have ice right and we have zero degrees celsius here and the ice was at negative 20 so it will start to gain but then it will level off here as it reaches um ice to water right so right now at negative 20 degrees celsius it's ice but as you increase the temperature going up to zero and it's changing state into water it will level off and then it will start to rise again okay these are important graphs to remember okay so here we have some um, energy calculations 
A student conducted an experiment which 1.5 kilograms of water at 30 degrees Celsius was converted to steam at 100 degrees Celsius. So assuming no heat is lost, calculate the amount of energy needed to heat the water from 30 degrees to 100 degrees. So here we have our formula E equals mc delta theta. Delta theta is simply the change in temperature. Okay, so your energy will be the mass which is 1.5 C is a specific heat capacity which will they give they will give you 4200 and your change in temperature is the final temperature which is 100 degrees minus your initial temperature which is 30 so it's 1.5 by 4200 by 70 okay so that will give us 441,000 joules. The energy to convert the water at 100 degrees Celsius to steam. So this is different now. So this is using the latent heat because we are changing states. So our formula here is E equals MLV. And they will give you your MLV, right? So again, M is 1.5, I wouldn't change. And the latent heat was 2.3 by 10 to the 6. That's what they give us here, right? Good. Put this in your calculator. You get 3,450,000 joules. And now they're asking for the total energy to heat the water from 30 and convert it to steam. So essentially, they just want us to add it together. Alright, so adding it together now. We add 441 to that and my final answer is 3,891,000 joules okay all right so stays in words the quantity each symbol represents in our equation e equals mc delta theta very easy okay so e is the thermal energy and the unit of energy is the joule c is a specific heat capacity and anywhere in your paper they will give you the the, the um the units when they're giving you the specific heat capacity so you just put it in and finally delta, delta theta is the temperature change and that is obviously the si unit will be kelvin right all right so the symbol l in the latent heat formula is obviously the specific latent heat okay right so here is a calculation in an experiment to determine the specific latent heat of fusion, we have some um, some findings here. After they poured um, melted ice, which is very cool, was that we don't have an initial temperature of the melted ice. All right, so after they poured the cold water into the warm water, they got a new temperature of 20 degrees Celsius, right? This was the initial temperature, the room temperature of water. They poured some cold water into it, and they noticed that the change in temperature was 20 degrees Celsius. Okay, so the initial mass of the water was 100 and they poured 10 grams of um, cold water into the 100 grams of the water, right? Okay, so we have to calculate the heat lost by the water. This is very simple. It's the same formula. Mc delta theta. So they want the water, right? So the mass of the water is 100 grams. Now pay attention to a specific heat capacity and its units. They give you this in grams, right? So look at the information. They give us specific heat capacity, 4.2, not 4200 anymore because they use grams, right? 100 by 4.2 and your temperature change will actually be negative now because your final temperature is 20. Your initial temperature was 30. So you get 100 by 4.2 by minus 10. So that will go, is going to give us negative 4200 joules. And it's negative because it's heat lost, right? And there is um, the heat gain by the melted ice. Well, you don't need to calculate anything for that because heat lost by water is equal to heat gained by ice so it's 4200 joules right so it's positive this time 
And look, they kind of give over the answer there. Assuming the heat lost by the water is equal to the heat gained by the ice, calculate the specific latent heat of fusion of ice. So that's what his experiment was trying to determine, right? So um, the formula is E equals M L F, right? It's fusion, right? So we have the, the energy, which is 4200. We have the mass, which is 10 grams, because after they add the melted ice, it went from 100 grams to 110. So the amount of ice was just 10. 10, and then we have the LF. So to make LF the subject of the formula, we just divide by 10. So LF is 4200 divided by 10, and we will get 420 as the latent heat of fusion, okay? All right, so just some information about the, um, the thermometer. It's very simple. So we have the Mercury in Glass Laboratory Thermometer, and its major divine feature is a narrow bore. And why it is narrow is to increase sensitivity, so the temperature will raise very quickly when it is um, exposed to a change in temperature. The clinical thermometer has a constriction in the bore. So when you measure somebody's temperature, when you pull it away from them, the temperature does not start to decrease one time. Right, the um, the mercury or the alcohol in the thermometer will stick at the bore, so you could actually watch the accurate temperature. The thermocouple thermometer is very interesting. It's actually made of metal with a very low heat capacity, so it's able to um, measure rapidly changing temperatures because just a minor change in temperature would cause um, the heat cap the the amount of electricity in the thermometer to change because the metal has a low heat capacity. So define the upper and lower fixed points on the Celsius temperature scale and state their respective values. So the lower fixed point of the thermometer is the temperature of pure melting ice at normal pressure, and this temperature is 0 degrees Celsius. The upper fixed point of a Celsius thermometer is 100 degrees Celsius, and what is this? is the temperature of pure boiling water at a normal pressure. And these are all the different questions that you get asked with respect to temperature. So I hope you guys enjoy.